Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So in this video I'd like to give you guys an update on my ginger plants. What I have here is a ginger at the back which is just your normal edible ginger and then the two on the side are actually heady chiums which are a type of hardy ginger which I'll be growing out in my garden. So I'll start off with the, the, the ginger that I had previously which is just the normal edible ginger. I got a small tuber from a supermarket. I planted that in a pot and grew it for one summer and then it got a little bit larger so I replanted it again it last summer it clumped up quite a bit and I'll show you a picture now of what the tuber looked like it really did get to a decent size and I had the option of splitting it and making numerous plants but I wanted just to keep it as a large tuber because if I have a larger plant there's more chance for it flowering and I'd quite like to see my ginger possibly flower one day so in the previous video as I say I dug it up it was the middle of winter it had gone completely dormant and I replanted it in, in the same pot again um, but I just repositioned it slightly and it should have plenty of space now to, to grow and hopefully get to a decent size this year. There was a very small section of the tuber which had broken off so I put that in a separate pot. This one I'm going to be planting in my parents' polytunnel, see how it grows in there. Um, ginger's like quite warm soil so although it's warm enough in the polytunnel uh, for the temperature for the air in the top half of the plant, the soil might be a bit cold so we're interested to see how that does. But this ginger should do quite well. Uh, this will be in my conservatory. It, does, it did really well last summer. But last summer I was a bit slow in getting it started. I think I only really planted it in April, so I didn't really get growing until about May or June time. The one thing with gingers is it seems to take a long time to come out of dormancy, especially with the edible ginger that's tropical. I need to give this a lot of heat, and even with a lot of heat I need to wait a couple of months before it then decides to grow. I think it was January that I planted this up, and it's now early April, you can see it's only really just starting to get going now. So it's quite a slow process to get a ginger going, but once it starts growing it does grow quite quickly. So there's three main shoots on this. The one at the back interestingly looks a little bit different. I don't know if that's going to be a flower shoot. It's um, much wider and uh, it's not elongating as much and there's no sign of leaves yet. But only time will tell what that will be. Uh, as I said before, I am hoping for some flowers this year because it's a much bigger tuber than previous years. But it's looking quite good so far. Um, generally with this, I find it grows to about three foot tall for me. The leaves tend to get a little bit damaged. I don't have the perfect climate here in Scotland for growing it, but in my conservatory it does okay. Um, I'll just have to keep an eye on it that it doesn't get too damaged by thrips and aphids. Thrips seem to be the big issue for this plant. It's often getting attacked by thrips, but I'll hopefully be able to deal with them this year. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it does. I'll see you guys in another update in a few months time with this one. It should be a lot bigger and hopefully we might even have some flowers this year. So the plants I'm most excited about are probably these hardy gingers. These are heady chiums. Heady chi chiums aren't quite like the normal gingers but they're they're pretty much very very similar anyway uh, the way they grow and everything they are in the ginger family and there's not a huge difference to how they grow but these are temperate plants or should I say subtropical plants so they don't have constant high temperatures year round these grow in the foothills of the Himalayas kind of around northern India and uh, so that their, their, their climate's quite different they have a cool period where they go dormant although the other uh, tropical gingers go dormant that's more of a, a dry wet season thing. This is more of a, a temperature thing, um, but also dry wet season. It's, it is a similar conditions, but these just come up from higher in the mountains, so they're used to cooler temperatures. And that cooler temperature allows them to survive frost a bit better as well. So the, although in its native habitat, it only gets very light frosts, because they're tuberous plants, if you give them a good mulch, they can survive quite hard frosts in, in most climates. So I can get down to minus 15. Um, if I give it a very deep layer of mulch, this should be able to survive that. But if I didn't mulch it, it would probably die at around minus five. That's the, the natural tolerance for this plant. One of the trickier things with heady chiums, though, is the, because the climate they come from is a monsoon climate, they used to loads of rain in the summer and then quite a dry winter. Not a completely dry winter because they are in the hills. They get a little bit of moisture and rain, but um, they're certainly not used to the wet, wet, wet winters that we get here in Scotland. So that might be an issue that I have to keep an eye out for. It could be the wet that kills it more than the frost. I don't want these to start rotting in, in our wet winters. So I might put some kind of like cover on top, maybe like a, a roofing slate or something, just to keep the moisture away from the, the base of the plant. Because one of the issues with covering it in a deep mulch is you're more likely to have it rotting because naturally these tubers grow right on the surface. So I got these quite a while ago. I think it was maybe back in January. I'll show you some photos now. As you can see, that they're in very small 9 centimeter pots and they were really starting to burst out. One of the pots was actually quite misshapen because it was um, the tuber had grown so much and it was kind of distorting the shape of the pot. So I then repotted them into these two larger pots. I had them in the house, um, not under any particular heat, but it was about 20 degrees in the house, so it was warm enough that they should come into growth. They were very slow. 
Um, it took them a couple of months to get going, but once they got going, they have been growing really quite quick. So one of the challenges of growing heady chiams here in Scotland is if you have quite a, a short growing season, but it's also a very cool or even cold growing season. So the average maximum temperatures we get is about 18 degrees in the midsummer. So th that's quite a lot cooler for what, than the optimum temperature for these plants. These plants will be happy just about over 20 degrees, something like that. And we don't get a huge number of days over 20 degrees. And because these plants actually naturally come out of the ground quite late in this season, so these will probably come out of the ground in my part of the world, probably end of May, beginning of June. And then we've only got two or three months of good growing weather. And then come September, the temperatures drop. And then we get the frost in September, late September, early October. So I'm probably not going to get these to flower if I just had them growing outside. So what I might do most years is dig them up in the autumn. That also means I don't need to worry about frost or any uh, rotting as well. Keep the tubers inside. I'll probably put them in a pot, um, but just keep them mostly dry. Keep them dormant, somewhere quite cold uh, to, to keep that natural dormancy. Then around January, February time, I'll start watering them, give them a bit more warmth bring them into growth, then hopefully I can get decent sized plants to put in the garden around late May, early June. Then that will give me a good head start, but the plants should already be two or three foot tall, and then I should be able to get flowers uh, over the summertime. So I've got two different varieties here. Uh, the one on the right is a Hedychium Telstar, the one on the left is a Hedychium Wadii. I can't find a huge amount of information about the differences of these online. Uh, both of them are supposed to grow to about one and a half meters in height, and um, both of them should flower in a warmer summer, uh, but here in Charlotte, as I say, without the head start, I think I'll only get foliage. But I'm happy with that. Even if I just get foliage, that'll be fine. The uh, the Telstar on the right here, this one has orange flowers, and uh, the the Wadi Eye on the left has ye uh, bright yellow flowers. They're quite lo different looking flowers. The Wadi Eye on the left has much thicker, wider petals. The Hedychium Telstar tends to have much smaller petals, kind of a more frilly kind of flower. They're quite different uh, looking flowers, so they're, they're not like closely related in, in the in the Hedychium uh, species. Telstar 4 is actually a hybrid between a couple of other ones. I think the Wardi Eye is actually a, trace, uh, a, a straight species. The other difference with these two is the Telstar tends to have longer, thinner leaves, more like your normal ginger, your edible ginger. You can see this already, um, quite long, narrow leaves. The Wardi Eye on the left tends to have much thicker, broader leaves. You can sort of see this, it's hard to tell because it's only got one leaf at the moment. Um, but you can see there, that leaf is already looking a bit wider than the Telstar on the right. Once they get into their full size leaves, it'll be a bit more obvious. When it comes to th the sturdiness of stem, I'm not sure if there's going to be much difference, but at the moment, uh, certainly the Telstar is, is a lot thinner than the, the Wardi Eye. The Wardi Eye seems to have a much stouter stem, much thicker, uh, whereas the Telstar seems to be a lot thinner. And when these came in January, they had about 10 centimeters of last year's stem, and certainly the Wardi Eye had a much thicker, woodier stem than the Telstar 4 did, but as I say, I'm not too sure um, that I can't find much information online if that's going to continue or if it's just that the, the Wardi Eye was a more mature plant than the Telstar 4 was. So my plan for these this year is I'm going to be growing them in the conservatory until the early summer, then I can plant them out once they're a good size. I'm hoping these two plants are going to size up a little bit. I would like to get quite a good clump of each type. There's only one small tuber from each plant at the moment, which is why they're only sending up one uh, one shoot. But I'm hoping these are going to clump up, and next year I might get three or four, maybe five shoots from each one. And then in the future I can separate them, leave some permanently in the ground, see how they do, and other ones I can take inside the house in the winter. Because I don't want to leave these outside at the moment and risk them dying off, especially as I've only just got them. So I'd like to increase the numbers and get some nice clumps formed. So my, I, my plan for these is I'm going to have them in my most tropical bed. And basically most of my back garden is going to be a jungle style um, garden but I've got one bed which I'm going to have true tropical plants such as hardy gingers, hardy bananas and palm trees as well and that is the bed I'm going to spend the most time and effort on so because they're all in the same location I can give them the same treatment and I can make sure there's plenty of mulch and well looked after because I can't mulch and, and um, insulate the whole garden I'll just do this on this one tropical bed. So the idea is because these are kind of woodland plants they they're quite happy with dappled shade. Uh, here in Scotland, because we have quite dull summers, um, full sun is actually probably going to be slightly better for them than dappled shade. Um, but um, the idea is I'm going to grow these underneath the bananas as a kind of mid-story plant. I'm also going to be growing underneath the bananas uh, several different cannas. Small cannas at the front are just going to be like a ground cover and then large cannas at the back are going to be more like the banana trees. They're going to be like a mid-story, kind of high story. These are going to be somewhere in the middle. These are probably going to be a mid-story plant, uh, so probably in the middle of the bed. 
and grown above the smallest ground covering canna lilies and uh, but lower than the bananas. So that, that's the kind of position I'm going for these. Um, they should give quite a nice screening as well. They do grow quite densely once you get a nice little clump growing. So I'm quite looking forward to seeing how these do. As I say, I'm not expecting flowers. Uh, my climate's not conducive for it, but I'm hopeful that if I really give these a really good head start and get a good sized clump going and maybe bring them forward every year by bringing them in the conservatory over winter and giving them a good head start that I might actually get some flowers from them, which will be a great bonus. But the main thing I'm, I'm growing these for is just the foliage, that nice tropical appearance. The gingers don't look like any other plants that grow in gardens naturally in Scotland or any even any um, popular garden plants that have been brought in from abroad. None of them really have this kind of look that the gingers have, so it gives it a really nice tropical appearance. And if the flowers do come, that's just an added bonus. So that's all for this video. Um, I'll give you guys an update probably at the beginning of summer when I'll be probably planting these outside into their permanent positions in the beds and the edible ginger will hopefully be a decent size probably by two or three foot tall by then and um, it will be clumping up probably sending up some several new shoots and completely filling the pot I think that ginger that this will be, be probably be the last year that I have the edible ginger in that pot it will need separating or be put into an even bigger pot next year because that tube is already quite large for that size of pot